Hello, my name is Aaron Warnock, and I am a math faculty advisor for Pearson in the western half of the United States. Over the last few weeks, one of the main questions we've been getting is about online testing. So I wanted to share some strategies that I used in my final exam. These suggestions are not necessarily going to be perfect for everyone. One of the biggest questions is around accountability. How do I know that the students are doing the work themselves? How do I know that they're not using other resources? Unfortunately, that's almost impossible to do, um, having sheets of paper in front of them on the keyboard, even if you're using a proctoring service or a lockdown browser. We can't prevent that necessarily. In the right screen, you see a test being built. This is a scaled down version because I want to ultimately show you what it looks like to grade as well. I want to point out a couple of features. One is using pooling. For example, here are two questions about domain and range. One is essentially the shape of a half circle, and then the next, we've got a, like a trig oscillation with endpoints. And so domain and range, those are both equivalently hard in my opinion. Um, this one might be a tad more difficult because you've got the oscillation for students to think about. Um, but you can use pooling in your test. For example, 39 and 41, if I check those two boxes and then say pool, uh, they are already pooled, so I can't do that. Um, but if I check those boxes and say pool, then I can make one question out of those two and students will randomly get one of those. Alternatively, the, these next three questions are write this equation in slope intercept form. And each one of them is a little bit different as far as what the coefficients involve. And I think equivalently difficult. I can hit reload multiple times to see what that question is gonna look like as I'm building my test as well. I also assign points. So this question, if you remember, had two parts, both domain and range, similar idea. So I do three points each for six points and then four points for the main questions. I add an essay question. I have a reason why I'll explain in a little bit later. I'm not gonna show the whole rest of this. You can use the preview and remove button is what I've been hitting to basically get a summary of looking at it. What I wanna focus more on is the idea of the student showing their work. So I like to use um, actual paper. And currently, before COVID-19, my students would come. They would take the exam at the testing center or at a local testing center, wherever they were if they're not living locally for this online class, um, the testing center would provide them with an outline of the test. So here is a very small and can like sh squished together outline. I would put it out on the two pages. Um, but number one is state the domain and range. All I do is write the description of what that question is. And then number two is just slope intercept form. Number three is graphing a line, describing how do you use the two numbers. Number five, solving quadratic equations. Number six, solve a system of equations by elimination. Seven, scientific notation. Eight, height of a tree. Those are the eight questions here. The students are handed this paper. They're asked to show their work. So what I did for my final exam in the middle of March this year is I actually emailed this show work page to all of the students. And I said, you must print this page and you must write out and show all of your work. And then I say, take a picture and send it back to me. I don't use the word scan because nobody has a scanner or most everyone has a phone or a way to take a picture and email it back to me. Final exam is longer. It might be three or four pages of scratch work. And so the students would all email me and one email, I would get all three of their pictures. And yes, it took me maybe 20 or 30 minutes to sit down, open their three files, save it as one document, one PDF. Open the next three files, save it as one PDF by their last name. Open the next three files, save it as one PDF. So now I have written work of each student's exam. Then I go back through and I grade their exams in my lab, giving them partial credit. Part of the reason I've built these up to four and six points is because I wanna be able to give one, two or three points depending on what they did in their written work. I also say that if they don't show their work, you can read the directions here, they might lose points for problems done correctly. If a problem requires work in my opinion, it must be shown. I don't want them just typing the answer in on their phone and getting it somewhere off the internet. They need to show me all the steps. This does a couple of things for me. If I have set up the time limit for my test to be a reasonable, not too tight, but set it up to be a reasonable amount of time, and I ask them to email me as soon as the test is over, if they're taking the time to write out the solutions, which they should be, then they won't have that much time to be searching for answers somewhere else or looking things up in the book. Again, can they a little bit? They might be able to, um, but at the very least, they've got written solutions for each question that they did. A couple of features you have to be careful of if you're going to email the students the work ahead of time. Um, we can't scramble questions. 
I'm not checking the scramble question order because I need them to be able to go through. And when I'm grading the exams, I want number five to be solving quadratic equations. As I click on each student and I'm looking at their number five, I know that that's the same for all the students. Really scrambling in my mind is important if they're gonna take the, the quiz or test more than once. I don't want them thinking on their second attempt, oh, I know how to do number five this way. I want them understanding quadratic equations, not what number five was. If they're only taking the test once, Scrambling doesn't seem as important. You do have the issue of students sitting in the same room taking the test together and helping each other, and scrambling could prevent that. But that would be one thing to consider, of course. Um, I always say students, I hide the score and question results. I don't want the students to see their score until I've finished grading it. So those are just a couple settings. Think about scrambling and how long your test is going to be. Hide the score for now, and I want to show you what it looks like when you are going to grade this exam. For me, it did not appear here because I'm not actually a student, but because I put an essay question in there, there will be a work needs grading and it will show 30 or however many students have taken the test. It'll be listed here. You click work shows grading and you will be able to go through them. You'll notice my name is grayed out because I'm not actually a student in the class, so my work doesn't show up in that needs grading list. However, if I click on my name, I will still see the same view that you would see when you click on work needs grading. The nice thing is these green check marks, I don't have to think about them at all. I know they got them right. I've looked at their paper and just see general work that looks like what I want it to be. And so they get full credit on those questions. So on question number four, the student gets full credit for this. So I will give them one point. I meant to point out, if you rewind the video about five seconds, you'll see that there was a yellow circle here. This yellow circle made it so that the test was required by me to be graded. That was the essay question. And the reason I do that is now I just get to hit a button that says next student, grade their test. Next student, grade their test. Next student, grade their test. Otherwise, I have to close this window, hit next student over here, find the exam and grade it. Close that window, hit next student, find the exam and grade it. So that's many more clicks than I wanna be doing. By putting in one essay question, it pops up as, hey, you need to grade this test. And while I'm at it, I grade the rest of it. So I'm going to click over to question one. I'll do these quickly. I'm looking at their scratch paper. I'll give them two out of three on that problem. Looking at their solutions, they got their signs reversed. And so I'll probably give two out of four for that. But I'm clicking through. I'm looking at their written work. Directions were around to the nearest tenth. They gave 2592. So if you remember, this student had a 56%, I believe it was, before we started. And... Really, they earned an 80% on this test. So the reason I hide the scores because I don't want them to see it. If you have a tablet PC, I'm writing on their test. I'm grading things just like I would a paper pencil test. I hit save. You'll see the, the grade updated here. I go to my learning management system and upload those files if you want. That's an extra step. You don't have to do that. But I do come back to the settings page again. You'll remember that I did not allow anybody to see it. After the fact, I'll come back in and I will show the test score and the question results anytime after the due date or however you want to change that setting. But I restrict it from the beginning until I have graded their exams and then give them access. So again, just to review, my key steps are sending them a copy of a written worksheet. Some students don't have a printer. I say if you want to write neatly on your paper, numbered, in order, clear which question is which, that's fine as well. Um, I had about 20 students do this at the end of winter term, and it worked pretty smoothly with them just sending me pictures of their work, and I was able to grade their work and feel that they were accountable for what they submitted on their test.